Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome back to All About Canadian Books. This week, I'm very excited. My guest is Natasha Nohanovich. If you missed our Get to Know You, or sorry, the Get to Know Natasha interview, I'll put a link down below in the description box. In this segment, we're going to find out the story behind Natasha's debut novel, The Boy's Marble, which was published by Guernica Editions. And here's what it's about. The Boy's Marble is about a boy and a girl who promise to meet at midnight on a bench halfway between their apartments and run away together. Only the boy never comes. 20 years later in Montreal, she meets someone who reminds her of the boy and wonders whether it could really be him. The Boy's Marble is a brilliant anti-war novel written through the perspective of a child. It's hopeful, it's sad, it's innocent, it's beautiful, and I really enjoyed it. And I'm thrilled that Natasha is here and we can find out the story behind her book. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Natasha. Oh, thank you, Crystal. I'm I'm looking forward to our chat. <laughs> so for viewers, before the interview, before before we even hit record, one of my first questions to Natasha was, this is fiction, right? This is fiction, right? Because this book, it just, as a reader, as I was going through it, I just felt that so much of Natasha as a child was coming into the book. So that's actually my first question for you, Natasha, is how has, or how did young Natasha influence your writing of The Boy's Marble? Well, thank you for this question. Um, pretty much, I feel like young Natasha was almost the entire or main, main even, motivation for writing this book to begin with and um most of the um what's in there is actually lived through experiences that are real and even some of which i had even kind of forgotten about for the longest time like i feel let's say when i was in my early 20s i had kind of thought oh you know I've kind of moved on more but as the years went by it's just like little Natasha kept like coming more to the surface and all the like memories of the um, of you know details of what it was like during the time of the war and just her still wanting to understand or make sense of like all the horrible absurd things that happen that make no you know they don't make any sense to this day but mm -hmm. like I guess she's still trying to make sense of what happened and like why and what was the point of it all when everyone is just worse off for it um but yeah I feel like little Natasha just like even pushed this novel into being to exist in a way and I like the grown-up me just kind of tried to give her a voice to be able to do it yeah yeah did the grown-up you um like how did you know you were ready to tell this story because it I mean war is mm -hmm. obviously very traumatic and I, I I can't imagine so how did how did you know you were ready to sit down and write the story it kind of came over time like I didn't know that I was ready yeah. to tell it before I started writing like I was just kind of writing in my because I always carry a notebook when yeah. I walk around in the city and I I was just carrying my notebook and more and more I started writing in it all my mm -hmm. thoughts and then more and more these mm, 
thoughts kept coming out and maybe I don't know what time frame or when, but it feels like it was kind of an organic, um, well, I don't know what organic even means, but like over time it sort of flew, was flowing into me realizing that like I really sh this is gonna be a book and now I don't have any other choice almost <laughs> and like and then and then I, there was like a conscious choice at a mm -hmm. certain moment in time when I had like 30 or something pages filled of this stuff in my notebook yeah. to decide okay I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make this a novel now I'm like it doesn't matter how difficult it is, I guess yeah. that's just where my being is at yeah. to be like going ready. I don't know what made me ready, but it seemed like I was because they kept yeah. like being more and more on the surface. Yeah. Yeah. The past. Yeah. yeah. Within the Montreal context. Yeah. Maybe it was the new city or like moving to Montreal that triggered um, but then again, yeah, I moved to Montreal seven years ago, and there were years in Montreal before starting the novel. Yeah. <laughs> and Natasha, if I may ask, um, what made you decide to do fiction instead of a memoir? That's that's a. Um, I think fiction because it just allowed me a little bit more freedom to um although memoirs too you can you can write them with a more um, using fiction elements but fiction I feel like could give myself a little more freedom to use perhaps maybe um imagine imagined characters even though the girl is real the boy is like mm -hmm. a boy from my childhood and m most of it is real but I guess yeah maybe although it could be a memoir almost because <laughs> like I don't know like over 90 percent of it is like <laughs> actual actual uh real it's um but yeah, I guess some things are made like the, the the some characters or the the dog or yes. like it's like imagined or God like yes uh, yeah I could like intensify it a little bit more with the fiction yes. part yeah and that's actually one of one of my other questions I had for you you know often in a story that's um you know got that theme of anti-war in it there's a real um um frustration at god and you know if there's a god you know why are things happening this way and like, like an anger but in mm -hmm. your novel god just took on a very unique character or an, and had a, a unique role in your novel can you explain this a <laughs> little more for our viewers I loved it. <laughs> uh, I'm glad. Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, I didn't, or I didn't also feel myself this, like, um, I just want, like, sure, it doesn't make sense. And the, the absurdity of the war and like, it's such a horrible thing. And we all like what we ask ourselves, what's the meaning, but like, I wanted to, ask those questions like in a less accusing or like judging angry way like maybe it's towards the grown-ups like making this making these choices that are making the war happen um I guess I by you know not directing like a sort of angry angry judging or something um perspective towards god i guess it's kind of like taking the responsibility for ourselves and our own like lives and actions and i don't know also putting in like a little bit of quirky 
yeah. like spin on 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 God uh, God that like I don't know maybe makes him a little more or her or I don't know the entity <laughs> more like relatable or I don't know brings in a certain vulnerability and humility and mm-hmm. brings back the responsibility to us as humanity which I guess is what I primarily wanted rather than like directing the responsibility out into some but at the same time it's like this cosmos we're all you know it's all like a system where yeah where yeah basically what I said like so that like the responsibility so that we can change our actions for the future I suppose we don't repeat all the same things over again yeah and I I really enjoyed how you had him smoking a cigarette you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I thought that was really quite really quite quite fun but also that innocence and beauty of a child's perspective came through in those moments and I really liked it and I won't spoil this for anyone I really like the stray dog too like very much <laughs> oh, I'm glad yeah so I everyone else, you either. have to read the book to find out what I'm talking about <laughs> Right, right. I'll, I won't mention too much about them either. <laughs> and Natasha, your your book is, it's very complex. It's very layered. Um, you go from Montreal to Sarajevo. You've got imagination entwined with memories. Um, may I ask why this was the way you structured the book, the way you did? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I kind of like wanted the reader to rather than just like tell them the story of what happened I mean that that too of course but like I wanted to make the reader feel as much as is possible this mm-hmm. kind of like disorientation and fragmentation but coexistence of like Mm, what one goes through I guess when living through such a traumatic experience then in a way this is kind of how how for a while like how life continues like everything just almost uh, exists at the same time or like certain everyday things can trigger like yeah I don't know something that happened like 20 years ago mm. and I think if it was told in a more linear fashion yeah I guess that would be okay too a different kind of novel but it it, it wouldn't maybe be as intensely felt by the reader like the workings of trauma and memory yeah. and just feeling like you exist everywhere and nowhere at the same time yeah. So it's like this overlap of time and space in like in the form that I try to um, mm, mimic, like the form is trying to show that kind of like multi perception of life itself, like when you're going through this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was brilliant um, because you really did put me in this headspace because as I was reading and I thought oh I mean not that you could ever I would ever understand but I just gave a glimpse of like oh my gosh this must be what it's like to navigate the world after you've had uh, like been exposed to such horrendous things when you're a young child so I, I thought it was very effective very effective Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The other thing I really liked, I think I know the answer, but I'm I'm dying to know. Throughout your book, um, the boy doesn't have a name and neither does the protagonist. Why did you decide not to name your characters? I guess there are multiple reasons for that. Um, one, well, one, I guess, 
even though it's such a particular story to the Bosnian war and Sarajevo and like I have a particular boy in my mind that like from my childhood we kind of lost suddenly you know because we escaped suddenly from the war um but at the same time like so many people and children have gone through like such a similar experience and by kind of not naming either the I or the you yeah. I think it is more or I was hoping it's more effective in having the reader almost like <laughs> take on the protagonist I and the boy then can be or be representative of many yeah many such children that either yeah. that disappeared or died or in Bosnia but also like across through different countries we have so many you know so much conflict around the world that like um in a way even though it's situational to Sarajevo my book I try to also open it up a little by having this kind of name no name yeah yeah that was one reason the other yeah. or yeah I guess I, I mentioned two two reasons within this one where like the reader can take on more of the person like become almost the I um and then also, yeah, like specifically to the war in Bosnia, like there are many memorials to children and there's like some where some names are mentioned, but then some are not. And um, Or also in the book, like the girl is still looking for the boy and it never becomes, oh, I shouldn't give away the yeah, book. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah I think it's um my main reason was that like trying to make it more universal and trying to yeah. make the reader really become as one with not one mm -hmm. as much in the being of the eye as possible yeah oh I liked it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the other, another question I often think of was, you know, you've you've left that area of the world, so you're you've been in Canada now for a long time, but you still go back to Bosnia to mm -hmm. see your to see your grandparents. Yeah, yeah. My grandparents are in Bosnia. Um, well, my grandma died, but so now it's my grandpa. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, my condolences. My Thank condolences. Uh, but I, yeah, I go. I go quite a bit. Um, at least once a year, maybe twice, and for extended time too, yeah. like sometimes two months. I went for eight months once. Yeah. So Natasha, for for grown up Natasha, does that make you feel like you have one foot in Bosnia and one foot in Canada? Like that's a really kind of interesting. Um, I I don't even know how to describe it, but I guess yeah. Like, do you feel like you're straddling two different worlds? I do feel that way, um, and maybe like. Or maybe writing the book in a way since it came out in Canada and it will also come out in Bosnia sometime next year. Mm, maybe in a way it makes me feel like it is possible or like to have, even though it's like continent, it's like 6,000 kilometers yeah. in between. I think over time... Mm, at least I'm trying like to find a way rather than like to feel fragmented by the whole yeah. Yeah. You know, living in two places, having two homes. I'm like trying to sort of make them 
about like work with the not work with each other but like see it as something more enriching yeah that I can actually have a continuity in life that makes it like one life not like oh my life in Canada and like my yeah. life in Bosnia I'm like trying to yeah create a continuity of so maybe the book was a way of either consciously or not yeah making this bridge of sorts um or trying to fight my own like or not fight trying to heal my own mm, feeling of like oh I don't know I don't like which one is more home like Canada or Bosnia yeah. or when, when I'm in Bosnia I miss Canada when I'm in Canada I miss Bosnia yeah yeah so it's like um I think as the years have passed, it's becoming a little more like one life in a way, rather than seeing it as I have to pick one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because there's there's all different parts of Natasha, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the pieces are are coming together. Yeah, I think so. I think. I guess I'm lucky too that I have like the writing or the book or and it can be more possible to kind of build something in both places. Yeah. Yeah. Um Natasha, one last question. I mean, your your book is definitely anti-war and you know uh, the innocence, the loss of innocence, but still the innocence existing in a child um, who's going through a war. Um, what would you like readers to know about your book? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> I would just like them to know um, like that it's really, even though such it's about like really horrible things and living through like the most unimaginable one can think of like a war as a kid and like normalizing not normalizing but like getting used to like grenades and snipers and yeah all this absurd um in the end i really wanted to it also to sort of give weight and stress the other side of like what humanity is capable of like compassion and empathy yes. and because in a war you also see like kind of both things happening like of course you there's like this you know people killing each other and all that but then like there's also this humanity that comes out of some people that are willing to kind of risk their own lives to help you yeah. and I kind of also wanted to um, bring that to light as well and not just like the horror but also yeah. what beauty and compassion um, we are all capable of if we remember all the innocence and beauty and that a child still remembers yeah um, so that was my main goal and message with the book. And hopefully it comes through for you know, people reading it. <laughs> it comes through beautifully, just beautifully, because it really is a different narrative. Like I was thinking about it before we started this conversation. I mean, mm -hmm. other than Anne, Anne Frank, I don't really know. I can't think of another book that I've read that is through a child's perception, but then the, the crossing of the present and the past. And yeah, no, I thought it was really clever and very impactful and very hopeful. So thank you for sharing your, your world with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you all for your time and uh, 
I very much enjoyed our talk. <laughs> yeah. And what I'll do, Natasha, is I'll put links down below in the description box so viewers can um, go to your website, check out all of the stuff you're working on, and also purchase a copy of The Boy's Marble. And um, yes, so thank you, thank you, thank you for being such a fabulous guest on All About Canadian Books. I have loved getting to know you and learning the story behind your book. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> it's been so wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, no, it's it's my pleasure. And viewers, please don't forget to come back. Interviews are posted the second and fourth week of every month on Tuesdays and Thursdays and my next guest oh <laughs> the sea between two shores Tannis Rideout she's on deck and thank you thank you thank you thank you Natasha oh thank you Crystal thank you so much <laughs> pleasure Natasha Nah 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 oh I now I blew it at the end <laughs> I was doing so well. <laughs> Natasha Nahanovic. Vic. Bitch. Bitch. That's it. You got it. Great. <laughs> Great. It's a difficult name. You're doing wonderful. Oh, you're you're very sweet. <laughs> yeah. So everyone out there, don't listen to me at all. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Sorry, Natasha. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.